several times. Brother Cody Amber from Brother Jerry's Church, the youth leader at Pastor Jerry's Church, East Elk and Full Gospel, uh, is going to be speaking for us next Sunday. Looking forward to it. He's a dedicated young man, and I just felt led that he had a message for us. So you come expecting God to move in a special way. The sycamore tree, Luke chapter 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. You've heard the song, haven't you? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. And he ran before and he climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. Notice that, received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all mumbered, saying that he was gone to be guest with the man that is a sinner, that religious crowd. That sanctimonious crowd. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. Now listen to verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek... And to save that which was lost. Father, oh, I thank you for your anointing this morning. I thank you for the Spirit of God that's been in this house from the very start. I thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of the saints as we come together and encourage one another. And as we come together to praise and magnify your name and to learn more from your word. And I pray, Lord, that your word will go forth right now. I ask God that you'd help me to speak just the things that are needed, nothing more, nothing less. Your word is powerful, and your word is able to do what you send it forth to do. Let it be this day in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak about the sycamore tree here in just a moment. But before we get into that story, I want to talk about a couple other things this morning. The Lord seeks us. And He seeks people because He loves us. Who am I that Jesus would desire me? But He loved me so much that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. St. John chapter 4. <coughs> I want to read real quickly verses 3 through 15. A story you know very well. And he left Judea and he departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. I wish I had a map up here this morning. And you would see as Jesus was traveling, Samaritan jots right out in the middle of the path that he was going. But all the Jews, all the religious folks, all those who thought they were so righteous would walk many miles out of their way and up around Samaria to get to where Jesus was going. But listen to what the Word of God tells us. He left and he was doing this. Verse 4 says, And he must needs go through Samaria. Why? Because he knew there was a woman sitting at that well. Let me read on. Or would be there at the well. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sarnach, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. 
And it was about the sixth hour. Then come a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou being a Jew, ask us to drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would give thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with the wells deep. From whence then hast thou that that living water? Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? <clears throat> Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Now listen. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus seeks and saves those that are lost. Jesus reaches out To those in need. Don't think that the heavens is closed between you and God. God will always make a way. Hear this woman of Samaritan. As we get into the story and Jesus speaks to her and she says, Sir, give me this water. And he wants to get deep. He wants to get her to the place that she realizes that Jesus has the answer and that Jesus has the the solution and that Jesus has that living water. And he says, go get your husband and bring him here. And she said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have said well because you've had five and the man that you're now living with is not your husband. Most would have never spoken to this woman. I believe one of the reasons that she went out to the well to draw at this time, this was the hottest part of the day, and they put the task, the hard task, like carrying water and different things off it. She came out in the middle of the day so she wouldn't have to look or have those gazes at her and hear the gossiping around behind her back and those talking about her. But Jesus was not there for that reason. Jesus did not come to condemn. Jesus did not come to put down. He came that conviction might touch her heart and life and that she might realize that she was thirsty and the things that she was using in her life to quench her thirst would never quench her thirst. But that there was a living God, oh hallelujah, that could bring salvation, that could bring a forgiveness, that could bring a peace that passeth understanding. I see in this world today so many people that are looking at everything in this world world. They're going to every kind of well that they can go to. They're drinking from every source that they can drink that they might find some peace of mind, that they might can find some peace of heart. Because friend, if you've not noticed, we live in troubled, troubled times. We live in times like I've never seen before. This book told us they was coming. But we've never seen the times that we are now facing before. But let me tell you, there is one who has living water. There is one, oh hallelujah, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and if we're drawn to there we can find peace and we can find safety and there we can find forgiveness she went and she told everyone she she spoke further and she said I perceive that you are prophetic Jesus asked her these things and she speaks this confession the woman listen verse 25 the woman saith unto him I know that Messiah's which is called Christ, when He is come, He will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am He. I am the one, oh glory be to God, that is sent to draw lost man. I am that Christ. That woman immediately went 
into the community and she began to proclaim and come see a man. Oh, glory be to God. Come see a man. Church, we need to leave this house this morning going into the highways and into the hedges. We need to go out next week crying, come see a man. Come see a man. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, oh, glory be to God. Jesus, our Savior. Come see a man that can take every problem, every care, every situation that you face. Come see a man that can turn it around. Come see see a man that will speak hope when there is no hope. Come see a man that will speak peace when there is no peace. Come see a man. You'll read that the whole town came out to see Jesus. This woman got their attention. And they came out to see and Jesus spoke with them. We'll later realize in the later part of this chapter, and we won't look at it today, but there's two days that he spends there in Samaria teaching and preaching to those. But listen to verse 42. Or verse 41. And many more believed because of His own Word, because of the Word that Christ spoke. They heard the living Word speak the Word. Verse 42. And they said unto the woman, Now we believe. That's the key. Church, it's not that simple, you might say. It is that simple. When you truly believe in Christ, He'll come in your heart. He'll come in your life and He'll make a difference. We believe now not because of thy saying, for we have heard Him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. They believed and they received. The Jews in the synagogue that had all the tablets that were written, all the prophecies that were fulfilled in Christ, they would not receive, they would not believe because of the hardness of their heart. But this woman that Christ came by that well that day believed and received. Luke, back to where we was reading a while ago in the chapter right before chapter 18. Jesus Christ has been going about ministering, touching hearts and touching lives and speaking forth the good things of God and the Word of God. And He is passing through. And as He passes through in Luke 18, 18 through 23, we won't take time to read it this morning. But there is a man who has been blind. Been blind from his youth. Blind, had never seen the light of day. And this man begins to cry out. Begins to say, Jesus, thy son of David, in verse 38 of 18, have mercy on me. The religious crowd around him tried to shut him up. They tried to hush him. They tried to get him to be still. Just be still. Jesus doesn't have time for you. I'm glad Jesus always has time for me. In the midnight hour when nobody's around. In the the early morning hours when nobody's near. I'm glad I can call out and He is very present and He is very near and His peace and the Holy Ghost of God can be there with me to minister to me. He cares and He is concerned. Do you think he just by happen chance passed that way? I don't believe so. We're going to get deeper into that in a moment. I believe he knew that the blind man was there. And we see Jesus as he heard that man cry out. The Word of God tells us he stood. In other words, he stopped. Now when I pray to the Lord, when I call upon Him... I like to get a picture of this in my mind. You ever talk to somebody? People come in my office. It's been a week. I'm not going to give the devil any praise whatsoever. I'm simply going to say it's been a week. And the other day, my head was spinning. There was two or three in there, and I was trying to... and and. I to be honest with you, I had other things to be doing too. And have you ever spoke to somebody and you know 
you know they're not paying you mind? You speak to them and you know they're not hearing what you're saying. Oh, they might be hearing it, but they ain't perceiving it and receiving it. But Jesus stood. Let me tell you, when you call upon Jesus, He hears you. He is never... Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. He is never... You know what the devil likes to tell you? He tells me too. I live in the same world you do. Jesus doesn't hear you. Jesus not listening. Jesus is not concerned. Jesus is not near that. He'll whisper that in. But when, you just, when He begins to do that, you need to picture Christ standing still. Amen. Bending His ear low and saying, what do you have need of? Jesus stood and listened. And He said, bring Him here. Glory be to God. And He touched the man. And the man seen. Have you ever thought about this? I thought about this often. Blind man's never seen anything. Don't you know that whenever he was carried to a brook and he felt that cool water and he heard it rushing over rocks, don't you know how bad he would love to see what that really looked like? I'm sure in his mind he had a picture, but he could never know. When he would feel the sunrise and he could feel the beautiful sun touching his face in the warmth. Don't you know he wanted to see that? Don't you know the mountains and all the beauty around him he wanted to see? But you know the first sight he got to see? Ooh, glory be to God. He got to see the Son, all right. The very Son of God. Glory. When his eyes was open, he seen Jesus. Glory. And when our eyes are open, when we really believe, when we really grab a hold, when we really come to Jesus, and we believe in Him and we know Him, we see Jesus. There's another instance. And as I said a while ago, Jesus went by there for a reason and a purpose. He knew they would be there. There's another incident that we're given also in Luke 18, 18 through 23. You see, not all that Jesus calls seeks, not all that Jesus calls or seeks accepts or receives. The rich young ruler, he was very rich. The Word of God tells us he had everything he needed. But he didn't have eternal life and he knew it. He had riches, he had wealth, those things he could hold on to. Those things he could see, those things he could possess, he had. But he knew he didn't have eternal life. And he comes to Jesus and he knows that Jesus is the Word of God. How can he help but know? Why would he come to Jesus unless he knew Jesus had the answer? But he knew Jesus had the answer. And he comes and he says, Good Master, what may I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells him some things to get him to do a little confessing. And Jesus tells him to keep the commandments of God, to walk in God's way. And he said, all my youth have I done these things. I have done it all. He lied right there, didn't he? Amen. The Son of God looks at him and he knows his heart now. And this man knows he knows his heart. And he looks at him because he's a very wealthy, has so much. Jesus says, go, sell all you have. Come and follow me. Do you see what a position Christ offered him? Do you realize what Christ has just offered him to follow me, to be one of my disciples, to come and walk with me and see what God is going to do and see what God is bringing to pass? Do you see what an honor? Come and have eternal life. But immediately Jesus saw that young man and he saw his face that he was sorrowful because he had many goods and he could not turn loose of what he could hold on to. You see, that's our problem today. 
That's the problem in the church. That's the problem in the world is we want to hold on to the things of this world instead of turning them loose. I've never seen it. I've heard that there is a trap where they catch monkeys by. And it is a trap where they put a banana or some type of treat in and they can get their hand in with their hand open and then get a hold of that treat, but they can't pull it back out with a clenched hand. And they say that they will sit there, even when the man comes to kill them, they'll sit there still trying to get that treat out. Is that not us? We see the things of the world. We see the possessions. We see the things that we don't need, those things that tire us down, those things we know that they destroy, but yet the flesh wants it and desires it, and we reach our hand in and we are trapped and we cannot turn loose. This man here would not turn loose of his riches. And the Word of God tells us he went away sorrowful. Many today reject the witness of God. They reject the sycamore tree that God puts there in their way. They reject the way that God has for them to come to Him. They reject it and they turn it away. Luke 19 verses 1 through 10 that I read to you, think about The plan of God that God set in motion to draw Zacchaeus, the tax collector, to him. The man that everybody despised. The IRS man. I mean, he wasn't one you just talked about or, or, or thought about. You saw him every day and he'd come to your door and he'd rob you blind and you had to give. The tax collector. The one that everybody hated and despised. But Jesus that day came for him. Think about. I just want you to stop. I heard a minister months ago began to preach this message. And I just jotted things down. And the Lord began to deal with my heart. And I thought about it many times as I'd pass by and see that little note. Think about that sycamore tree. Sycamore tree is something like a, a fig tree in the Middle East. And it's not something they try to raise figs on. It's just a wild tree. It's not a really wanted tree. It's bark loses as a sycamore tree in our country does. It loses its bark. It's not a beautiful tree. But think about when that tree began to grow, God had a plan. Think about it. I think about, Brother Tony, where that sycamore tree was. It wasn't really in a convenient place because it was kind of a busy fair fire. had to be. That's the way Jesus was passing by. That's the way the crowd was coming. I think about in my mind, there's probably many times somebody come by and thought, I'm going to cut that sycamore tree down. Mm -mm. God wouldn't allow it. You realize God's put things in our lives? You say, Pastor Doug, why? Why? Why do we strive? Why do we work to keep the church open, to keep the church doors open, to keep things going on? Because every time somebody passes by, they pass a sycamore tree. They have no excuse. They have no reason. You see, Zacchaeus was a man of small stature. He wanted to see Jesus. He had a desire. He knew Jesus had the words of life. He had heard about Him. He had seen these things. And he had heard all these things, but he desired to see Him for himself. But he knew the crowd was large. He could have said, there's no need. Life ain't fire. As Sister Norma talked about in Sunday school class this morning. Life's passed me by. I'm short. I'll, I'll never be able to see Jesus. But God had a sycamore tree there for him. Done had it there. Done had it there waiting for him. Zacchaeus heads that way and he, he, I believe in his mind he knew that tree's been there for a while. And he heads that way and the Bible tells us he climbs up in the sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. People pass by this morning with the doors open wherever they're headed to. And they have no desire to see Jesus. But they could. They, at, at Facebook, they will not listen. Oh, 
It did when it first started. Back in 2020. Brother Doug, you meddling. No, I'm not. They did then. But now they might watch part of it later on, but they never sat down and really, really worship God. The sycamore tree. There's a way. God makes a way. Now let me say this. I'm thankful for Facebook. Don't you take my words wrong. I'm thankful because it was a way and is a way. I'm thankful that every day that we sit down to sing, we don't sit down just to sing to sing, believe me. I can sing out in the yard or any worse. But we sit down to sing to be a sycamore tree, to be a light, to be a witness, that people might see Jesus. Zacchaeus received that. He climbed up in the tree and he saw Christ Jesus. I want you to think about this. He was brought to a decision. Either he missed Christ, or either he goes up in the tree where God had placed there for him to meet Christ. When Christ came by, glory be to God. When Christ came by and he looked up in that tree, and he saw Zacchaeus, don't you know he already knew he was in there? As he started down that path, Brother Larry, I believe he was, already knew he was going to look up and Zacchaeus was going to be right up there. And he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree for I'm going to your house today. I like what the Word of God tells us. He made haste. He came down. Christ came to the place. He looked up. And Christ is reaching out today to people. And people will not. I spoke to a young man this week, a young man, that if I called his name, everybody here would know him. I believe with all my heart God's working on his heart and his life. But he won't climb the sycamore tree. He won't reach back out. Excuses. Well, I've been real busy. Sycamore tree's there. Opportunity's there. The way to Christ is there. He made it easy so that a well-firing stranger, a person that is lost and does not know where they're at and has no hope, He made it easy where all they got to do is call upon His name in faith and believe. Amen. Christ reached out to him that day and Zacchaeus reached back down. I'm going to close. Christ the Holy Spirit is continually calling and drawing man today. Sycamore trees are placed in people's lives all day long. This church I mentioned is a sycamore tree. Your life. Mm. Bring it home now. Your life. My life. Should be a sycamore tree. To where they can see Jesus Christ. Your testimony, your life should shine out so that people can see Christ in you and through you. Will you come down to Christ today or will you reject Him? Father, Spirit of the living God, I love you this morning. Lord, those that are here this morning, those that are listening, and will listen later, I pray, Lord, that they don't have that hope of eternal life, that this moment, this hour, they'll see that this has been put in their life for a purpose and a reason, because you love them and you desire them. And you want to change their life, make them a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things pass away and behold, all things become new. You want to do a work, a wonderful work in their lives. Don't let them turn you aside today. Let them receive, let them make haste and receive you. In Jesus' name. I'm not going to wait but just a moment this morning. 
Anyone here this morning that does not have the assurance that blessed hope that should Jesus Christ come a call glory to God glory to God that you're ready you're prepared do you know Jesus today is he in your heart is he in your life do you have the peace of God He's calling today. He's reaching out. His Spirit's reaching out this morning. This altar's open this morning. Mm.